Ashkenazi Hebrew, Wikipedia article audio. Ashkenazi Hebrew, is the pronunciation system for Biblical and Mishnaic Hebrew favored for liturgical use and study by Ashkenazi Jewish practice. It survives today as a separate religious dialect within some parts of the Haredi community, even alongside modern Hebrew in Israel, although its use amongst non-Israeli Ashkenazi Jews has greatly diminished. As it is used parallel with modern Hebrew, its phonological differences are clearly recognized. Features Variants there are considerable differences between the Lithuanian, Polish, Hungarian, and German pronunciations. In addition to geographical differences, there are differences in register between the natural pronunciation in general use and the more prescriptive rules advocated by some rabbis and grammarians, particularly for use in reading the Torah. For example, there have been several theories on the origins of the different Hebrew reading traditions. The basic cleavage is between those who believe that the differences arose in medieval Europe and those who believe that they reflect older differences between the pronunciations of Hebrew and Aramaic current in different parts of the Fertile Crescent, that is to say Judea, Galilee, Syria, northern Mesopotamia, and Babylonia proper. Within the first group of theories, Zimmels believed that the Ashkenazi pronunciation arose in late medieval Europe and that the pronunciation prevailing in France and Germany in the time of the Tosafists was similar to the Sephardic. His evidence for this was the fact that Asher ben Jehiel, a German who became chief rabbi of Toledo, never refers to any difference of pronunciation though he is normally very sensitive to differences between the two communities. The difficulty with the second group of theories is that we do not know for certain what the pronunciations of these countries actually were and how far they differed. Since the expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492, if not before, the Sephardic pronunciation of the vowels became standard in all these countries ironing out any differences that previously existed. This makes it harder to adjudicate between the different theories on the relationship between today's pronunciation systems and those of ancient times. Leopold Zunes believed that the Ashkenazi pronunciation was derived from that of Palestine in Genic times, while the Sephardi pronunciation was derived from that of Babylonia. This theory was supported by the fact that, in some respects, Ashkenazi Hebrew resembles the Western dialect of Syriac while Sephardi Hebrew resembles the Eastern, e.g. Eastern Syriac Peshitta as against Western Syriac Peshito. Ashkenazi Hebrew in its written form also resembles Palestinian Hebrew in its tendency to male spellings. History Others including Abraham Zevi Idelson, believed that the distinction is more ancient, and represents the distinction between the Judean and Galilean dialects of Hebrew in Mishnaic times, with the Sephardi pronunciation being derived from Judean and the Ashkenazi from Galilean. This theory is supported by the fact that Ashkenazi Hebrew, like Samaritan Hebrew, has lost the distinct sounds of many of the guttural letters, while there are references in the Talmud to this as a feature of Galilean speech. Idel Son ascribes the Ashkenazi pronunciation of Comets Gadol as to the influence of Phoenician, see Canaanite shift. In the time of the Masoretes there were three distinct notations for denoting vowels and other details of pronunciation in biblical and liturgical texts. One was the Babylonian, another was the Palestinian, the third was the Tiberian, which eventually superseded the other two and is still in use today. Influence on Modern Hebrew In certain respects the Ashkenazi pronunciation provides a better fit to the Tiberian notation than do the other reading traditions, for example, 
it distinguishes between Pata and Kama, Gadol, and between Siegel and Air, and does not make the Kama symbol do duty for two different sounds. A distinctive variant of the Tiburian notation was in fact used by Ashkenazim, before being superseded by the standard version. On the other hand, it is unlikely that in the Tiburian system, Er and Olam were diphthongs as they are in Ashkenazi Hebrew, they are more likely to have been closed vowels. For more details of the reconstructed pronunciation underlying the Tiburian notation, see Tiburian vocalization. In other respects Ashkenazi Hebrew resembles Yemenite Hebrew, which appears to be related to the Babylonian notation. Shared features include the pronunciation of Kama, Gadol as end, in the case of Lithuanian Jews and some but not all Yemenites, of Olam as. These features are not found in the Hebrew pronunciation of today's Iraqi Jews, which as explained has been overlaid by Sephardi Hebrew, but are found in some of the Judeo-Aramaic languages of northern Iraq and in some dialects of Syriac. Another possibility is that these features were found within an isogloss that included Syria, northern Palestine, and northern Mesopotamia but not Judea or Babylonia proper, and did not coincide exactly with the use of any one notation shift may have applied to a more restricted area than the Kama. Gadol equals shift. The Yemenite pronunciation would, on this hypothesis, be derived from that of northern Mesopotamia and the Ashkenazi pronunciation from that of northern Palestine. The Sephardic pronunciation appears to be derived from that of Judea, as evidenced by its fit to the Palestinian notation. End Notes According to the Maharal of Prague and many other scholars, including Rabbi Yaakov Emden, one of the leading Hebrew grammarians of all time, Ashkenazi Hebrew is the most accurate pronunciation of Hebrew preserved. The reason given is that it preserves distinctions, such as between Pata and Kama, which are not reflected in the Sephardic and other dialects. Only in the Ashkenazi pronunciation are all seven Nekudot distinguished, Yemenite, which comes close does not distinguish Pata from Siegel. On the other hand, this view does not appear to be supported by any non-Ashkenazi scholars. Some scholars argue in favor of the greater authenticity of the Yemenite pronunciation on the ground that it is the only Hebrew pronunciation to distinguish all the consonants. Literature Although modern Hebrew was intended to be based on Mishnaic spelling and Sephardi Hebrew pronunciation, the language as spoken in Israel has adapted to the popular Ashkenazi Hebrew phonology in the following respects. Alep and Ayan are completely silent at all times in most forms of Ashkenazi Hebrew, where they are frequently both pronounced as a glottal stop in modern Hebrew or Yiru'al vs. Yiru'al. A special case is Dutch Hebrew, where Ayan is traditionally pronounced as a velar nasal, probably under the influence of the local Spanish and Portuguese Jews. A is pronounced in Ashkenazi Hebrew, unless there is a ditch in the, where it would be pronounced. It is always pronounced in modern Hebrew. Er slash e slash is pronounced in Ashkenazi Hebrew, where it would be pronounced in Sephardi Hebrew, modern Hebrew varies between the two pronunciations. Or Umain vs. Amen. Came. Ga. Ol slash a slash is pronounced in the southern dialects in Ashkenazi Hebrew, where it is in modern Hebrew. Or Duvid vs. David. Olam slash o slash is, depending on the sub-dialect, pronounced, or in Ashkenazi Hebrew, 
where it is in modern Hebrew, unstressed, kabu, or Shurik slash you slash occasionally becomes in Ashkenazi Hebrew, when in all other forms they are pronounced in the Hungarian and Oberlander dialects, the pronunciation is invariably, there is some confusion between final, tsir slash e slash end, hyrik slash i slash. These are most obvious in the treatment of, olam, the German pronunciation is, the Galician slash Polish pronunciation is, the Hungarian is, and the Lithuanian pronunciation is. Other variants exist, for example in the United Kingdom, the original tradition was to use the German pronunciation, but over the years the sound of, Olam has tended to merge with the local pronunciation of Long O as in To and some communities have abandoned Ashkenazi Hebrew altogether in favor of the Israeli Sephardi pronunciation, Tzir is pronounced in the majority of Ashkenazic traditions. In Polish usage, however, it was not infrequently, another feature that distinguishes the Lithuanian pronunciation, traditionally used in an area encompassing modern days Baltic states, Belarus, and parts of Ukraine and Russia is its merger of sin and shin, both of which are pronounced as. This is similar to the pronunciation of the Ephraimites recorded in Judges 12, which is the source of the term shibboleth, the pronunciation of resh varies between an alveolar flap or trill and a voiced uvular fricative or trill, depending on variations in the local dialects of German and Yiddish. In earlier centuries the stress in Ashkenazi Hebrew usually fell on the penultimate, instead of the last syllable as in most other dialects. In the 17th and 18th centuries there was a campaign by Ashkenazi rabbis such as Jacob Emden and the Vilna Jayon to encourage final stress in accordance with the stress marks printed in the Bible. This was successful as concerned liturgical use such as reading from the Torah. However, the older stress pattern persists in the pronunciation of Hebrew words in Yiddish and in early modern poetry by Haim Naman Bialik and Shal Chernichevsky, the merger of to and to in speech occurred at some point between the 11th century and the 18th century, but many later Ashkenazi authorities advocate using the pharyngeal articulation of and when representing the community in religious service such as prayer and Torah reading though this is seldom observed in practice. Similarly, strict usage requires the articulation of initial. As a glottal stop, in general use, the mobile Shiva is often omitted. However, in liturgical use strict conformity to the grammatical rules is encouraged. The elimination of pharyngeal articulation in the letters, eth and, ion, the conversion of resh from an alveolar flap to a voiced uvular fricative or trill, the pronunciation of tsir as in some contexts, the elimination of vocal shiva, some of the letter names, in popular speech, penultimate stress in proper names, similarly, Penultimate stress in nouns or verbs with a second or third person plural suffix instead of ketoftem, shalom alekem instead of shalom alekem.